What's up and welcome back to part 3 of this mini-series. Today I will be walking you through the assembly of the 3D printed jet engine model designed by Katia 5 FTW on Thingiverse. Before we start assembling though, let's make sure we have the hardware and the tools needed for the job. For tools, I recommend having some angled tweezers to help with those tough to reach nut locations. You'll also need a screwdriver. I used the Lynx star head screws, but I just use a small flathead screwdriver. That works perfectly fine. Needle nose pliers come in handy for helping to tighten some of the parts, so keep those close. You'll probably also want the sandpaper, and maybe even a file to help with some of the clearances. For hardware, you're going to need 77 screws, 146 washers, and 77 nuts. I've got links to the hardware in the description. If you use the links below, I'd recommend just getting the bags of 100. It comes out to a little bit cheaper than buying the correct number. You're also going to need two sets of two bearings, the 6003 bearings and the 6204 bearings. Again, the link is in the description. Okay, at this point we've got all of our parts, tools, and hardware ready, so let's hop into the assembly process. I started by laying everything out on a nice work surface. This allowed me to ensure that I had everything needed for the build. We begin the process by dry fitting each of our major sections. That means no glue yet. We really just want to get all of our parts together and make sure that everything fits. The compressor comes first. We start by sliding the rotors on from the back side. Just do it in order from 1 to 5. Make sure you can push them all the way to the stopping point. If they aren't flush, you're going to get some wobble in your compressor, so just make sure you have them nice and flush. It's also important to make sure that the blades are facing the right direction. I mean, it's not really that important, it will still go together, but you want it to look right, don't you? Next, we'll be pushing on the stators. These kind of just snap on over the shaft. Note that you only need stators 1 through 4 on this. 5 is going to come in later. To ensure proper orientation, look for the angled part of the shroud. This side should face forward. If you're confused, just look at the case. It should be pretty clear which direction these go. Now that the compressor core is assembled, let's press it into the case. Align the stators and press them into the case. I found it easiest if the stators were rotated slightly up. Alternatively, you could have put the stators into the case first and then pressed the rotor and core into it. I just didn't like the way that this pushed on the blades when flexing the case. Alright, congrats, you now have a finished HPC module. Take the time now to check for fit and clearances. We'll be taking this back apart to reassemble with glue later, so now's your time to fix any issues. Next, we move on to the low pressure turbine. As with the compressor, start by dry fitting the rotors. I went in order R3, R4, R2, R1. Note that R3 and R4 slide on from the back, while R2 and R1 slide on from the front. Again, make sure these fit flush against the ridge in the hub. Now it's time to add stators. You can either snap them on just like the HPC, or you can remove the rotors to slide them on between stages. In this step, you're only putting on stators 2 through 4. Now, in comes the case, and we're going to slide stator 1 into position. Now we're going to take the LPT core and push that into the case. If it's too tight for you, you can try inserting all the stators into the case first, and then push the hub with the rotors. Your LPT module is now fully assembled, and it's time to move to the combustor. We'll start by taking the fifth stage HPC rotor that we put aside earlier, and sliding that one into place. Now bring in the combustion liner, and slide it in from the other direction. The combustor dome plate goes in next. Just put it in the general right position, and then rotate it around to work its way into place. We're now going to take all 11 fuel nozzles and push them into their slots. I found it best to start with the two outside ones, and then a couple in the middle, and then just fill in the rest. The combustor is now complete, and we finish the module dry fitting. You can now disassemble each of these modules, and we'll be reassembling with glue shortly. The next step though is going to be dry fitting all of the bearings. Just go through in the order that I have shown here. Don't force anything too hard. It should be tight, but you should be able to remove the bearings after fitting them. If it's too tight, just bust out the sandpaper and sand it down a bit. Okay, let's start the gluing process. We'll begin with the spinner cone. Simply add the spinner tip and the stripe to the cone with some glue. The stripe can be kind of tricky. I found it best to just do a little bit at a time. Sort of roll it along the surface. Put some glue on the bottom of the stripe, put the stripe in place, and just roll it up. Then unroll it a little bit, add some more glue, and repeat until you've eventually got glue all the way up and the stripe is just staying in place. For the HPC, we're again going to add all five rotors, but this time we're going to be gluing each one to the shaft. Once that's dry, snap the stators on again and press it into the case. When you're happy with the way things look, we can glue the stators. 
I found it best to do this one at a time by rotating the stator out slightly, adding glue, and rotating it back in. I then pinched the case a bit to help ensure the glue held. While doing this I also constantly spun the rotors in the shaft, just to make sure that the glue didn't stick to them as well. Back onto the LPT, again you're going to glue the rotors to the hub. Now you can either snap the stators onto the hub, or you can put them straight into the case. If you put them straight into the case, make sure you don't glue them yet, that's going to hold the case too tight and you won't be able to snap the rotors in. Now just as before, we're going to press these rotors into the case. Using the same process as the HPC, we're going to glue the LPT stators in place. Just rotate them out one at a time, add glue, and rotate it back into place. Again, don't forget to spin the rotors and squeeze the case slightly while the glue is drying. Okay, now back again to the combustor. We're going to go ahead and glue the Stage 5 HPC stator in place. Now we're going to take the combustor liner and put that in. I put it in place and then rotate it a bit, add glue, and rotate it back, sort of like we did with the stators. Next, get the dome back in place. This is a pane of glue, so just sort of tack it in a few spots. It's not going anywhere. Lastly, we're going to be putting each of the fuel nozzles back in. Just take your time with these and make sure you have them lined up properly for when the glue dries. At this point, your assembly should look something like this. This step is optional, but you can remove the seals from the bearings if you want. Open bearings will spin freer, but can also get dirty and wear out sooner. It's really up to you. Okay, it's time to start the final assembly. Start by gluing the nozzle cone. Then bolt the mixer in place. This will take 13 screws and nuts and 26 washers. For most of these attachments, you'll be putting a washer on each side. Next, we're going to bolt the LPT shaft to the LPT hub. This will take 8 screws and nuts and 16 washers. Now add a bearing to the LPT shaft. We're going to be bolting the LPT module to the aft section with another 8 screws and nuts and 16 washers. This is tricky. The seating of this bearing will determine the clearance between the LPT rotors and stators. If you don't like the alignment, sand or file down the bearing seating, in the axial direction that is, until you get the result you want. Then bolt it together. Now let's jump to the front of the engine. Grab the fan, the LP shaft, 8 screws, 8 nuts, and 8 washers. This time you only need 8 washers because no washers go inside the fan. Once you have that bolted together nice and snug, go ahead and glue the spinner cone to the front of the fan. Next, grab the fan casing and the fan stator casing, 11 screws and nuts, and 12 washers. Put these together, leaving the two empty holes on the same side. Next, we're adding two bearings to the shaft and putting the fan into the fan case. You can glue the larger bearing to the case at this time if you want, but I'd hold off until after you add the HPC module. This isn't really necessary at this minute, but this is when I would go ahead and add the LP shaft connector. You can glue it in place if you want. Now let's use 8 screws and nuts and 16 washers to attach the HPT to the HPC module. Then take that full module and stick it to our fan case using 7 screws and nuts and 14 washers. The screws here are a pain to deal with, and the angle tweezers really come in handy for this one. Now let's bring in the combustor module along with 7 screws and nuts and 14 washers. And for the last step we're going to need the final 7 screws and nuts and 14 washers. And there you have it, a fully assembled two-spool jet engine. The final model is 16.5 inches long with a diameter of 8 inches, and it weighs 2.8 pounds when done. That's 1128 grams of printed material, or 947 grams of printed material after you remove the supports. Well, that is if you use my settings. With my settings, in total it took 10 days and 9 hours of print time. For more information on the individual parts, check out the stack-up document below, and check out my post in the comments of the Thingiverse thread. As mentioned earlier, this is a dual spool model, just like most real jets. That means that we have the LP and the HP shafts spinning independently of each other. I'm extremely happy with the way this turned out, and this is such a cool model. This is going to look great on my desk at work. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop it a like. I don't plan on doing too many 3D printing videos. I mean, unless there's a big interest. So, sub if you want, or don't. I don't really care. If you have any questions, as always, you can hit me up on Twitter, in the comments below, or for questions for this specific model, feel free to head over to the Thingiverse page. Thanks again to Katia 5 ftw for making this model available to everyone. I had a blast making this, and hopefully you all enjoyed this slightly different than normal video. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will catch you next time.